Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a model that was made in 10 pieces. This example sold in 2020. It is the Richard Mille RM11 SP. That is RM11 Spain. You can see the Spanish flag flag theme on the reverse as well as a note that this is the limited edition Spain. This is one of 10 made in red gold and titanium. So while technically this would be part of the long running RM11 Felipe Massa series, this one's really more of a Fernando Alonso and you can see the Spanish flag colors on the dial as well. It's a large watch, but not huge. I measure it 41.3 millimeters across the case. That's not including the crown structures. It's 16.3 millimeters thick and then from end to end across the the total distance is 49.7 millimeters. You can also see that the camber of the case, the curve of this famous Richard Mille tunnel, it really does mitigate against fit issues. So though it's a big watch, it fits easily on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Very comfortable. It sits and it stays. It's blockish. It's imposing. It's definitely brash and it's going to be noticed. It's a huge gold RM after all, but it does fit nicely. And you can see that the lugs actually come nowhere near the edge of my wrist. And that's evident from over the top as well. Taking a look at the cuff shot, you're going to have issues with tight dress sleeves, but a jacket should clear it. Taking an assessment of what kind of wrist this will fit, I would say 15 centimeters circumference and up. The strap is proprietary. It's an RM piece. It's vulcanized rubber. It's a matte finish in red. You can see ventilation. You can also see hollows in profile to echo the hollows of the case. We have a Richard Mille buckle here in red gold with beveling and satination, as well as a titanium spline screw. You can see on the underside of the bevel, we actually have media blast. So we have satin polish and media blast all on the buckle alone. A lot of detail here. The interior is a combination of a titanium folding assembly and then a leaf spring. This is the GNF Chatelain leaf spring system used on a lot of high-end watches, among others, MBNF and Richard Mille are famed for using this clasp made by a well-regarded clasp bracelet and case maker owned by Chanel. We also have a case that is made of rose gold and titanium. And I'm not sure we need to know that this is titanium in text form. I think most people would already understand that. But Richard Mill loves to advertise features. For example, do you want to reset and restart your chronograph without first stopping? Here's your flyback. Do you wish to stop and start? Well, you can do that too. The case is finished with satin and polish, though only the gold elements feature polished bevels. We have titanium spline screws that hold the sandwich structure together. You can see that the flanks are a little bit recessed. And then we have the columns inside of which the bodies of the spline screws pass to hold all of this tight. The watch does feature a crown with a turbine-like profile. There are strakes on the alternately satinated and polished chronograph triggers. And then we have a little tire-like rubber shoulder for the crown. You'll note that the crown features a combination of satin and media blasting. There's a lot of detail here. We have a cambered sapphire that traces the arc of the case, which is always a complex thing to make water resistant. Though if you look on the reverse side, you will see the watch is 50 meters water resistant, albeit with a push-down crown. There's a second sapphire underneath the first one, and on that second sapphire that sits below, we have the printing of the chronograph scales, the frame for the date, and then the individual numerals outboard. There's a carbon fiber flange that holds the luminescent indices, and that flange also features a tachymeter, which can be used with the chronograph to gauge the speed of an object, such as a race car over a kilometer. We'll do a quick loom shot so you can get a sense of how the watch looks in the dark. Maybe not exhaustively loomed, but you do have chronograph seconds. You do have the chronograph subregisters. You have the hours and you have the minutes. Now, the watch is an annual calendar flyback chronograph, so the flyback is self-evident. But we have a large date up at the top. You can see there are two wheels on which that large double-digit date is conducted. And then we have a little month hiding between four and five. And that little month allows you to use the annual calendar function because you can see the date and the month. An annual calendar only needs to be fixed once a year, reset for the jump from February to March. It needs to be adjusted once annually. We do have a stop seconds function in addition to the quick set. And you can see that this is a motorsports chronograph. We have a 60 minute scale, which is a lot more useful to me than a scale that ends at 30. I don't know why every chronograph minute scale is in 60 minutes. We have 60 minutes in an hour. So there's always that gap between the 30th minute 
and the 60th minute. You have to guess or know how many times your chronograph has rolled. Fortunately, you can see with our Spanish yellow and red, we have superimposed 60 minute and 12 hour chronograph hands. So your minutes and hours superimposed there. We have a second minutes display broken out, I suppose, to make it more intelligible that sits over at nine o'clock, but those two track identically with each other. Now flipping it all over, we have the RMAC one movement. I mentioned that the clasp is from Genève Chatelain. The case is made by Volgin, you know that because it says so on the back. There's the Volgin V. The complication module is made by Dubois de Praz of Lelou, Switzerland. And then the base movement is actually a Vauche piece created by the Parmigiani family of companies, but heavily modified for the RM application. You can see the little Vauche star on the base plate right there. You can also see that a clear sapphire has been used as the capstone and the cupstone for the balance staff, so maintaining the monochromatic technical look. You can see that this was born as a Vauche 6201 movement. It beats weight at four hertz, it's free sprung for durability against shock, and it has five position adjustment, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. You you can see it's all made of grade 5 titanium to reduce the mass and the susceptibility to shock because it is a modular complication. It's got a high joule count of 68, you know, at the five position adjustment, which is a very high standard of adjustment. Two barrels with automatic winding. It's got a 55 hour power reserve. And then we have these variable inertia masses on the rotor. And so depending on your level of activity, very active, completely sedentary, somewhere in between, your RM watchmaker can make adjustments here to change the winding efficiency and the speed and efficiency with which the watch will wind that 55 hour power reserve. So you can tailor the system to reduce the wear and tear. You can also see that we have these anchoring points at each corner and there's a little rubber donut between the anchor and the actual base plate providing a high degree of shock resistance. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this Richard Meal RM11 Spain, a limited series of 10 pieces.